The clear next step for me, though, is to, to go back to what we did today uh, mm -hmm. and extend that into the, the T chart and, and pull mm -hmm. it off to pull it apart tomorrow. So I think tomorrow what I'll do is I'll focus solely on learner B and not mm -hmm. even worry about learner A mm -hmm. strategy mm -hmm. just yet, um, since there was so much discussion around learner B today. Things that I think was really clear from this lesson was that um, the kids were really engaged in it. And to me, it was the perfect example of the difference between a re-engagement lesson and a reteaching. Because what you did is with the, with the re-engagement lesson, the focus is on the kids. There's where the, the, the primary source of action is. It's the kids. With the reteaching, it seems to me the primary source of, of, of action is the teacher going over something again. But this thing, the kids just kept digging. They thought they'd had it figured out, but they kept going and going, and they realized that, oh, I, I didn't quite have this, and they really got into it. So I think they're going to be excited to take this on again, keep going with it. So that's the, it speaks to the real power of re-engagement. It's, it's uh, student-focused. One of the things that came up today that I heard a lot, especially in the reflection piece and looking through the cards as well, was this notion that, um, well, I see how that person's doing it, but I'm right, and this is the how. <laughs> so I, that's like uh, philosophically a direction that I want to go with my class is to kind of push that envelope a little bit and mm -hmm. really to see that there are multiple correct ways to see what's happening in this pattern uh, and in many different patterns, and that actually, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about Kelsey and Kylie and how they were feeling that way about their own strategies that they were both mm -hmm. right. But getting them to both come to the conclusion that they are both right and they're equivalent, I guess, mm -hmm. just kind of a, a global perspective. Mm -hmm. So a starting point for that might be what you had said before about going ahead and uh, finishing the in and the out table for both ways of seeing it, then graphing it and seeing that the in and the out table, the X and the Y are the same in both cases, the, the right. rule is the same in both cases. Um, something that jumped out at me is, is um, what you referred to as well, is their, their seeming inability to let go of how they were thinking about it and really look at somebody else's work. Um, because I, when that group that I was talking to, and I, I saw them referring to 11 groups of three plus the four, they never had gone back and actually counted to see that there were really only 10 initially, because when they were first presenting, they referred constantly to 11 groups of three. It didn't seem to bother them when they did realize that there was only 10 groups of three, and they still couldn't, didn't put that together. So um, I'd, I'd say probably a lot more work with exploring different ways of looking at it. And um, I'm going to go back to, to saying I think they need to talk about it. I think they need to talk to somebody about how they're seeing and see you know, if they can prove it. Maybe, maybe justifying and improving how they're seeing it might be a way to, to get into one, it. That, that group in particular, one of the things that came up that sort of surprised me um, around the mathematics today was this uh, protract reason why your graphing took longer or your member talk took longer is how they wanted to, they thought that the correct way to represent the rule is it x3 minus 3 is it 3x I thought that was kind of a really interesting conversation I'm, it, it's surprised where did that come from but, but looking at it there was a discussion at the I think it was Eric he was talking about well is it x groups of 3 or is it 3 groups of x so is it x 3 times or 3 x times and then I saw that again with the 11 and the 3 is it th th 11 three times, or is it three 11 times? I think there's a little muddiness around that concept, and I think that they understand um, that the order in which you multiply things doesn't matter, but it does matter when it's tied to some real situation. And a lot of the mathematics we do here is tied to real s a real situation, and that matters to them. Sure. Is it you know three mm -hmm. 11 times or 11 three times? Because mm -hmm. one represents the reality of the patterns we were seeing, and one doesn't. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that, that kind it's of a key me. point. Yesterday when I did the number talk, on, I did a number talk on, on graphing a line. It came up. Are we talking about three groups of x or x groups of three? That mm. conversation started yesterday, and there was a lot of confusion around. Well, what is the situation that we're describing? And so it boiled down to the learners looking at um, for each iteration on that line that we were graphing. How far over on X were we going, and how high on Y were we going? So the idea of run over or rise uh -huh. over run, uh -huh. the slope, 
So without talking slope, they were kind of puzzling about it and wondering if that had a relationship to how they should write the rule. Uh -huh. So I thought that was a really good mm -hmm. direction for them to be heading, and I agree with you that they are, there is still some fuzziness around yeah. how should I represent my rule. Yeah, yeah. I was really fascinated by uh, the whole notion of pattern zero. There are a few uh, learners that were bringing mm -hmm. pattern zero up, uh, and then David said, well, you can't go any further once you get the pattern zero. Um, and in a way, he's right, because he's thinking about the buttons, and we're not going to have negative buttons. But when we start talking about functions, and, uh, and we're graphing those functions, we definitely go into negative. Uh, we go into integers. So mm -hmm. I, I, um, I don't know. I kind of see that as another place to go with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the nice thing is, is that I've got a full year's worth of material <laughs> out of just. Uh, I would say so. Last couple of days of lessons, so. It was extremely well done, and we thank you so much oh. for letting us come into your classroom and view your work with your wonderful students.